Hello. <laughs> My name is Gravely. I'm a witch. Um, no, I'm just kidding. My name's Matt Whiteside. I'm a guy who's a dude who's also a bro and a homie and a fellow and a friend. And I'm over here trying to be your friend, talk to you on the Unawebs. The Unawebs where one peoples come together is all peoples. Okay? And today, let me tell you what I'm doing. Okay? I'm reading a book that I wrote. I write a book, I read a book. You tell me what you think, eh? Feeling kind of wacky today. My face is going crazy. Uh, wacky, man. Wacky inflatable, inflatable arm mat. I'm having a lot of fun today. I've enjoyed, I'm enjoying my life today. I'm enjoying what I'm doing today. I love reading. And writing and going like this is to the camera. This energy drink is crazy. <laughs> Man, I'm supposed to be reading chapter three. And I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it, man. man, man, man. Gonna read another chapter. And chapter uh this is obviously not the reading rainbow or uh you know other places where they read books uh this is matt's channel matt time this is where you come for freedom and happiness and creative creative integrity and learning how to be your there to be a field <laughs> so chapter three is called taco tuesday just a quick recap here um Oh yeah, uh, it's the chapter two. We found out that Sir Ajahn now has magical abilities given to him by an uh, enchanted sword that was created by the wizard Merlin. Uh, had his blade cut off, and the heart, and his heart was stabbed through by the sword that gave him these superpowers. Now he's dead. He's zombie, like super zombie, like super. This is a big distinction because a lot of people, you know, have zombie stories that where zombies are just dumb. Zombies can't do a thing. They just walk around like jerks. Or they run after people like jerks. Right? This guy's not a jerk. He's still a good dude. He's got he's a knight full of value and heart. And uh I think you'll find that. I think you will. I think you're gonna find it in this story. I think you'll find it in chapter three. Um so here we go. Chapter three. <laughs> Chapter 3, Taco Tuesday. Two weeks later. The cock crowed loudly outside the castle window. Inside lay half man, half knight, full super zombie. Sir Ajahn was finally stirring from under his heavy goose down comforter in his massive knight sized four poster bed. A knight sized bed was roughly the size of a king sized bed, but the king had copyrighted king size for naming rights to his bed. And we didn't need any more lawsuits, especially around here. They always want to cut off your head. These guys go from zero to murder at the drop of a hat. Anyway, I got a bit sidetracked. Sir A. John clears his throat, <coughs> looks at his watch for air, with an air of impatience. Right, so uh, another day has arrived, and what a day it would be as Sir A. John was due to get his new legs today. Walking around on your hands was fine and all, but with the sanitation in this city, Sir Ajon had to wear his sword swinging gloves all day, and they were becoming filthy. Stretching and yawning with great relief, Sir Ajon hopped out of bed. Oh, what a beautiful day to be dead. I'm picking my new rock kickers today. I will finally be able to see eye to eye with the other knights, especially after everything that happened last week. I mean, sure. I get the weird looks and people acting strange around me. I mean, I would probably feel the same if it happened to someone else. But being as different as I already obviously am, having a new pair of state-of-the-art legs is going to do wonders for my image. Being a super zombie should have been the worst thing to happen to me. But now that I am dead, I tell you what, I have a new lease on life. I can't smell or taste anything, which is fine by me. 
because this new diet that I am on sucks. Now, the cravings could be kept at bay as long as I ate a heavy diet of raw meats. However, the decay was something that I was struggling with. Sure, I look very chic with my sunken in cheeks and hollow lifeless eyes, but my flesh was always falling off. I must have gone through ten tubes of Merlin's magic mucking solution, always reapplying more to stick my flesh back on. Last week, my nipple fell off while I was laughing at a joke Sir Marson told. How embarrassing! It fell right out of the bottom of my tunic. Well, some mucking solution took care of that for now. Those men may never let me live that one down. Anyway, today was going to be a good day. Now I must get dressed to get go get my new legs. Oh, I am ex so excited. Now if you'll excuse me, the other guy will catch you up on everything else. Hey, other guy, take it away. Hello? Are you awake? Huh? Oh, oh, oh. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Must have dozed off, Sir Ajon. I will take it from here. Thanks, disembodied voice that follows me around and sums things up and moves my story along. Uh, yeah, um, no problem. So, where were we? Right, Sir Ajon had spent the last week trying to help his father understand what had happened to him. Hey, tell them about the dragon. I thought I was telling. I, I thought you were getting dressed. Would you let me tell them? Yeah, right. Sorry, I just didn't want you to forget. This is the only reason I exist. Why would I forget? Okay, okay. Jeez, what a stick in the mud. Sir Ajon said, grumbling under his breath, which I can obviously hear. Ha ha! Oh, right. You see and hear everything. Can I please get on with the story now? Yeah, sure. Be my guest. I'll just be over here trying to put on my knickers. Great. Thanks for that information. We really needed to know. Anyway, where were we? Ah, yes. The dragon. Tell him about how big and scary it was. Oh, for the love of God, would you shut it up? I will tell them everything. Ah, sorry. Sir Ajon said, hanging his head. Ugh. So last week, after Sir Ajon spent days cleaning the castle of fingernail clippings, dust and dirt, he was summoned by the king. It was unusual for the, unusual for the king to speak to his knights personally, but considering the circumstances of, of Sir Ajon being killed and coming back as a hideously gross, legless monster zombie, Hey! Hey! Take it easy! I'm not gross! Sir Ajon complained. <clears throat> like I was saying, the king decided to make a special request after hearing what had happened to Sir Ajon. It was a Tuesday, I believe, because we were having tacos. Yeah, tacos rock! Sir Ajon chimed in, struggling to get his underwear on. Now every Tuesday was a special night, but this Taco Tuesday was different. For one, Sir Ajon, the only knight to survive death, kind of, was there. Second, the king and his men, Sir Lancelot among the lot, <laughs> was there as well. Having just returned from a horrific battle for the rights to blueprints for a new catapult design that was go was gonna really, uh, hmm, catapult the army to new heights. Now these men knew how to celebrate a victory. Mead and wine were plentiful and flowed freely, and the women were something else as well. Most of them had all their teeth and bathed that week. Ooh. This was one wild party. It was getting late into the night, and the king had drank a giant share of mead, as had Sir Lancelot, who was sitting at the king's right. King Arthur looked at Lancelot and asked him, Lancelot, where is that boy of yours? I'd like to talk about him being dead, King Arthur requested. He's just over there, my king. I will get him. With a touch of anger and a dash of pity, Lancelot walked to his son. Boy, the king wishes to speak to you, Lancelot said in an angry growl. Oh yes, father. I was hoping you and I would get a chance to talk. A lot has happened since you have been gone, Sir Ajon happily told his father. Yes, I can see that you went and got yourself killed and cut in half. Quite the tall feat. Ha <laughs> ha, you get it. 
Sir Lancelot said, elbowing his son in the side of the head. Ha! Yeah, ha ha. Good one. Aren't you glad I'm still here? What? Are you crazy? As well, you are a freak show boy. You may have been my son in life, but you are not my son now. You are a monster. I would have thrown you out of the castle if not for your mother and the king's fascination, fascination with you. Wow, that was a pretty nasty thing for a dad to tell his son, even if he is dead. To his credit, Sir Ajahn lifted his chin and laughed. Ha <laughs> ha! Good one, father! Slapping him on the butt as he made his way to the king. You idiot! Don't touch my butt! Sir Lancelot face twisted with anger as he watched his son swing his body up to the king. Hey, King Arthur! What's up, man? Long time no see. Still rocking that awesome sword? What's its name? Uh, experimental excrement exemplary... Excalibur, you idiot! The king said with an angry look on his face. Oh, right! Well, mine is called Ralph the Ravager. Sounds cooler, I think. Plus, it wasn't stuck in some rock. I pulled this bad boy off the back of a wagon. Sir Ajon, please shut up, King Arthur said, rubbing his forehead in annoyance. Oh, okay, sorry. I want to know if you will be of any use to us anymore as a knight, or if I should banish you, seeing as how you are a grotesque undead monster. Oh, is that all? Well, yeah. I'm still a great addition to the round table of knights. I, uh, got like super strength and can't be killed anymore. So I'm like your most valuable weapon, you know? Except for maybe that new catapult thing. Which, by the way, I don't know how much of an improvement adding a cup holder onto the side of catapult really makes. I mean, did you really need to go to war over that? Sir A. John asked, scratching his head confused. You obviously never tried firing a catapult first thing in the morning. We had more men sent to the infirmary with third degree burns from spilling their coffee than the last time we had to fight a dragon. Yes, I'd say it's a big deal. Okay, well, geez, sorry I asked. I had no idea. I figured you could just put a lid on the coffee or something. The king looked at Sir Aegeon furiously. Sir Aegeon just stared back at the king with his lifeless eyes. So, so, you are super strong, you say? Oh yeah, really strong. Watch this. Without a second thought, Sir Aegeon lifted the king in his throne in one hand, straight up over his head. Whoa, whoa, put me down, you buffoon. With a loud thud, Sir Aegeon dropped the king instead of placing him back down. See? Pretty strong, huh? Looking a bit dazed, but no worse for the wear, the king chuckled a bit. Ha <laughs> ha! Yes, you are very strong indeed. And you can't die either, the king asked, obviously more interested now. Well, no, I'm already dead, aren't I? Yes, yes, very interesting, the king said, with a glimmer of, of an idea in his eye. Listen, Sir Aegeon, I may have a job for you. It will be extremely dangerous, but if you succeed, we will keep you on as a knight, and maybe even get you a new pair of legs. Would you like that? The king asked, rubbing his hands together. <laughs> oh yes, that would be great. The more dangerous, the better. I'm not afraid of anything now. Now that I'm dead and stuff, I feel great. I would, I would like a reinforced helmet, though. There is something about getting stabbed in the brain that might not be good for me. Fine, fine, yes. We will talk tomorrow about your mission. Meet me in my chamber at a quarter past the cock's crow. So, 7.25? Sir Aegeon asked. No, 7.15, King Arthur said in an annoyed tone. Yeah, but a quarter is 25, right? So that doesn't make any sense. Oh, just go on, please, Sir Aegeon. My head hurts now. The king closed his eyes and shooed Sir Aegeon away. Oh, all right. Well, I'll see you in the morning. Have a good night, king. With a wave and a smile, Sir Aegeon trudged off. This was going to be a huge opportunity to prove himself to the king and his father. 
He knew he had to succeed, and success starts with a good night's rest. So off to bed he went. <laughs> so, I want to keep reading. I'm enjoying it today, so I'm just going to keep going. This is chapter four, a simple task. <gasps> chapter break. Chapter four, simple task. Waking with a start, Sir Ajon sat bolt upright in his bed. It was still dark out, but dawn was fast approaching. Perfect. This will give me time to get ready and eat before I meet with the king. I don't want to be thinking of eating his brains while I, while he's giving me my mission. Getting up dressed in a flurry, Sir Ajon shot out his door and down to the kitchens in the castle. At this time of the morning, the cooks were getting ready to slaughter the livestock for the day. And with any luck, Sir Ajon could get the brains and entrails before they put them in some kind of pie. Yeah, and I'm the monster, Sir Ajon mused. With a cheerful good morning, Sir Ajon greeted Michael, the best cook in town. Hello, Michael. Good morning. How's it hanging? Morning, Sir Ajon. I was wondering if you would be stopping by this morning. I saved you some goat intestine and cow brain. Over there, next to the flower. Oh, Michael, you are too good to me. Thank you. I got an important meeting this morning with the king. Need to be on my game. Well, that is definitely brain food. <laughs> Michael said, laughing at his own humor. Oh, Michael, you are hilarious. Say, you ever think about using, like, fruits for pies instead of goat liver and cow brains? Ha, Sir Ajon, you sure have a funny sense of humor. Fruit pies? What will you think of next? A place to use bathroom indoors? Don't be ridiculous, Michael said, waving off Sir Ajon's suggestion. Yeah, crazy idea. Anyway, thanks for the brains and stuff. I'm off to talk to the king. Good luck, sir. Break a leg. Michael laughed heartily <laughs> as Sir Aegeon made his way out of the kitchen and up to the king's tower. The king's throne room was quite the sight to behold. Even the door, which was made of the finest maple and finished with a high gloss, the knocker on the door was in the shape of a golden sword in the stone. Unfortunately, it was a little out of reach for Sir Aegeon. So, he had to knock the old-fashioned way. Boom! Boom! Crash! Not so hard, Sir Aegeon. As the door dropped from its hinges onto the cold stone floor, a stunned and very irritated-looking King Arthur looked up from his mighty oak desk. Oh, no! I'm really sorry about that, your highness. I'm still getting used to this strength. Uh, just come in, Sir Aegeon, breathed an exasperated King Arthur. The walls were decorated with giant paintings of battles and portraits of Arthur and Merlin, one in which they both have a leg hiked up on the stone Excalibur was, pull was pulled from. Arthur, holding the sword high overhead as just a young boy in his squire's tunic, Merlin, seemingly always the same age, roughly a hundred or so, with his midnight purple wizard robe, with suns and moons and stars decorated all over. Directly behind the king was a portrait of Arthur and Guinevere in matching Christmas sweaters, holding a tiny Christmas tree and looking off into the distance with big open mouth grins. On their faces. <gasps> wow, this place is magnificent, your highness. You do all these paintings yourself? Sir Aegeon asked, said, asked wistfully taking in the room. No, Sir Aegeon, I am not a painter, the king said, rolling his eyes in annoyance. Off to the right, the walls were plastered with maps of every sort, depicting mountain ranges and forests, rivers running in every direction, and different symbols marking settlements of other people. Starting from left to right, the king had organized the maps of other kingdoms in Orb's Battle One, by placing a red W above the map, and all the king had won eight battles and acquired power over as many territories. It appeared that the king had his next three battles already mapped out. If he won those three battles, he would be king over the known world. Quite an incredible feat. 
Wow, you're going to rule the world soon. Only three battles left, and it's yours. Ah, uh, you are perceptive, Sir Aegeon, but I must always remember one battle at a time. I must put all my focus into our next opponent. I cannot allow myself to look too far ahead. Otherwise, I will miss something that could cost me victory in the battle at hand. King Arthur said wisely, Oh yeah, gotta stay focused, totally get that. Like when I was in Little League jousting, my coach would always say, One night at a time, Sir Aegeon. That is correct, Sir Aegeon, which brings me to the reason I have asked you here. Our next battle will take us through some very terrible terrain. Through those mountains you see there on the map, we named them Devil's Peak. Why did you name them something so scary? Wouldn't it have been better to name them something like Little Bunny's Hill or something? I feel like you're making it more intimidating for no reason. Well, we named it that because of what our scouts had found there. And it definitely is not bunnies. Oh, I see. Well, bunnies are really nice. So what did they find? Sir Aegeon asked, getting back to business. The scouts have reported seeing giant scorch marks and, ha and huge claw marks on many of the mountain passes, and worst of all, the husk of an adult dragon. Oh, wow! You don't say. Hmm. Well, that is something else, huh? Dragons sure can be nasty and a pain in the butt to get rid of. So what's this got to do with me? Well, Sir Aegeon, I would like you to go and slay the dragon, King Arthur said in a dangerous voice. If Aegeon still had a working heart, it may have exploded in his chest. <coughs> At that exact moment, ominous lightning <laughs> and thunder boomed loudly. Both the king and Aegeon looked out the window in surprise at the noise as it was the start of a beautiful day outside. Oh! I hired these sound effects guys to increase the drama and stuff around here. I noticed how boring normal life is after being in battle so often. They do a really good job, don't you think? King Arthur asked, pointing to the source of the noise off in the corner. Set two men with metal sheets and big clapping sticks. Ha! Huh, huh, well, well, yeah, that was really good. Definitely increased the drama of the whole Slay a Dragon news, Sir Ajahn said, looking drained. Great. Nice work, boys. Giving the two smiling men in the corner a thumbs up. So, you will do it then. It should be no problem for a knight of your caliber, not to mention your super strength in being unable to die. You will be great. Yeah, uh, well, <coughs> um, I've never fought a dragon before. Can I think about it? <laughs> no! You either go fight this dragon, or you will be exiled from the kingdom, Sir Aegeon. You are an undead monster, and it's just really gross keeping you around. You're making us look soft. Most kingdoms kill their monsters immediately. And you are just hanging around the castle. It doesn't look good for us. You understand, right? Oh, uh, sure, gotta make the Camelot brand stay number one. I don't want to screw that up, Sir Aegeon. Head was dipping low as he spoke. Great! So, we will get you a horse, and you will leave today. Um, yeah. Okay. Looking even more like the life had completely left him, Sir Aegeon took a deep breath. It's not like you can get much more dead than you already are. Plus, what chance do you have at any kind of life the way you are? The arrogant king sword stung Aegeon, standing there practicing his, practicing his golf swing as he sent Aegeon to his demise. Now get out of my sight. I want to be able to eat breakfast, and the sight of you is disgusting me. Go down to the stables and get your horse. Here is the map you need to find the dragon's cave. With a dejected grunt and a pitiful thank you, Sir Aegeon left the king's room looking even shorter than he already was. This was going to take every ounce of knighting that Aegeon knew, and he would have to rely on his newfound abilities to fight this creature. Although Aegeon was terrified, there was a glimmer of hope in him yet. He had to remember who he was and what he was capable of. Who cares that the king wanted him dead? Er, 
in that his father disowned him. It was time to be the knight he knew himself to be. Yeah, easy for you to say, I'm the one that has to fight the dragon. This sucks. Maybe the king is right. My life is worthless. Look at me. I'm, not, I'm nothing but a freakish monster that no one could ever love. No one will ever accept me. I'm a freaking zombie. I might as well just ride out there and let the dragon end it for me. At least I can go out pretending to be a hero, Sir Aegeon said, slinking back down the stairs to his quarters. With the weight of dying for the second time this week, Sir Aegeon did what he had been trained to do. He suited up his armor and made his way to the stables. Chapter break. Hold on, it's getting good. Let me get some water. These voices make me happy. <clears throat> Margaret, it's time to go to the market. Are you ready? Yes, mother. Here I am. Popping up from behind the wood stove, covered in soot from head to toe, Margaret smiled proudly at her accomplishment f of not only frightening her mother, but also making her gasp in appearance. Margaret, you're 14. It is time for you to grow up and stop being such a filthy child. You look ridiculous. How are you going to go out in public like that? You will never attract a husband at this rate. Oh, Mom, you worry so much about other people's thinking. Our streets are literally full of other people's excrement. And you worry about a little soot on me? Yes. Well, if I wanted my daughter to become part of the excrement, I would not allow you to live here. Now get upstairs and wash that off. Her smile fading, Margaret trudged off towards the stairs, stomping the whole way. And hurry up. I want to get to the market before all the fish and fruit goes bad. This is ridiculous, Margaret thought. I should be able to look how I want. I am an adult. I mean, girls my age are getting married and having babies, and I'm stuck here with that woman. I'm sick of this. She can find another girl's life to ruin. It's time for me to strike out on my own. I can take care of myself. I'd do everything around here anyway. She just sits around, waiting on a man to take care of her. Well, I won't waste any more time trying to be something that she wants me to be. It's time for me to be my own woman. Maybe I will go be an adventurer or a knight. That Sir Aegeon is a knight. If he, could, if he could be one, why couldn't I? I wonder if I could find him. With her intentions set, Margaret took her to her window like she did on the night Sir Aegeon came into her life. Having already fallen once from the window and without the soft, lifeless body of Sir Aegeon to land on, this time Margaret grabbed a couple of pairs of long underwear and tied them together tying one end to her bedpost and throwing the other end out the window. This gave her just enough slack to land without much impact. Still early enough in the morning, not many people were out on the streets, making her way all the easier. Up the alley she ran, away from home that she knew in her life that seemed so foreign to her, even though it was the only one she had ever known. Running faster and faster and faster, as if she were being chased, the reality, however, was that she had made up her mind to chase after something different for herself, wanting more out of life than the life her mother thought she should have. Margaret did not know exactly what it was she wanted out of life, and she was not sure that everything would work out, or that she would even be happy. She only knew that the life she had been living and the path that she was on was the wrong one. So Margaret ran in search of a new life in search of the night that she helped, in hope that the excitement of that first night they met could mean there was more adventure to be had. Breathless, she ran towards the castle, for she knew Sir Aegeon would be there. Finally, running out of steam, she slowed to a walk, and as she did, her mind began to catch up with her excitement. What was she going to say to Sir Aegeon? Hey, remember me? You crawled through my window the other night, and I helped you steal that horse. You want to hang out and uh, do cool stuff like that together every day? I sound completely insane, she thought to herself. 
Doubt began to creep in. The excitement of striking out on her own and making a fun and adventure-filled life for herself with some knight she just met all of a sudden seemed like the dumbest, craziest, most ridiculous idea she ever had. Her mother's voice sounded in her head. Margaret, a lady is meant to be taken care of and act proper. You are not meant to go running around, slaying monsters and getting dirty. That's a man's job. Now come inside and try on this pretty dress and help me with dinner. Margaret's face twisted in disgust, and she let out a feral yell. Ah! Forget that! The thought of her mother's small-minded view of what she was capable of refueled her desire and excitement. Breathing heavy and wild, eyes, eyes she looked around, suddenly realizing she was in the middle of town, screaming like a crazy person. <laughs> Margaret! Hey, Margaret! Is that you? Looking past the shopkeepers and a small number of townspeople that stopped to stare at her, she was able to make out a very short man in knight's armor standing next to the king's stables. It was Sir Aegeon, taller than she remembered and much thinner. He looked very gaunt, but still handsome. Smiling, she ran towards him. Sir Aegeon! Oh, Sir Aegeon! I'm so glad I found you. I was, in fact, looking specifically for you. Hmm. <laughs> Is that so? Well, how can I be of service, my lady? Is everything all right? Why were you screaming in the streets? Ha! Oh, that. Uh, it's nothing. Well, it's not nothing. It's kind of everything. Uh, um, I'm sorry. I don't follow. Sir Aegean looked at Margaret with a confused smile. Where are you going, Sir Aegean? Ah, yes. Well, the king has commissioned my unique abilities as a knight and a super zombie for a very dangerous mission. That sounds very exciting. Sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, exciting, uh, <laughs> a very dejected Sir Aegon looked back towards his horse, trying not to look too ridiculous as he threw the saddle over the horse's back and, step and strapped it on tight. What is it, S.A.? What's wrong? Aren't you excited? Huh? S.A.? Yeah, it's short for Sir Aegeon. Just a cooler way of saying it, like a nickname. <laughs> oh, okay. And uh, to answer your question, no, I am not excited. The only reason the king is sending me to do this is because he hopes that I don't come back. He, along with my father, seemed to wish that I had never. I would just have died when my legs were cut off. Well, well, I'm glad you're still here, S.A. Plus. What could be so bad that you are afraid of it? I mean, you are a knight with amazing powers now. Ah, thank you for saying that, Margaret. But even with my abilities, I believe my quest to be a one-way trip. I must go face a dragon in the mountains, lovingly named Devil's Peak, by our imaginative king. Sir Aegeon looked as though he would have kicked the dirt if he had legs. Oh my! A dragon? That is great, Margaret squealed, bouncing up and down, clapping her hands together. What could you possibly mean that is great? Dragons are the most feared creatures in all the world. Only one man has ever defeated a dragon and lived to tell the tale. Of course, he died later that week from an infected hangnail, but still, the odds are not in my favor. Well, good thing you're not a man. What? How dare you? Just because I lost my legs does not mean I'm not a man anymore. No, no, you misunderstood. You are more than a man now. You are a super zombie knight. And not only that, but I will come with you. And I'm not a man either. So, what do the odds say about that? Margaret said, swaying proud of herself. Hmm, well, I would have to go to the library and check the dragon battle stat book. But I do believe a pairing like that has never faced a dragon. Good. In that case, S.A., I say we go and make some history. Margaret, you sure seem to know how to get riled up. But surely you cannot expect me to allow you to come with me. You are just a girl. You will get hurt. 
Immediately, it was evident to Aegon that he had said the wrong thing, as Margaret's boot rocketed square into the middle of Sir Aegon's breastplate, sending him flying backwards into his horse. Sir Aegon looked stunned and ridiculous as he lay on the side for a moment before rioting himself, writing himself and laughing with such amusement that Margaret's anger faded and she began to laugh as well. Ha! 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 I obviously underestimated you, my lady. Grab a horse and whatever else you may need from the armory. We will set out shortly. With a look of determination and unbridled enthusiasm, Margaret ran to the work of readying her horse and herself for the journey ahead. It was really happening. She was on her way to fight a dragon with a knight. The idea of it was so enthralling, Margaret shook with excited energy as she worked. Filling her travel sack with small edibles for herself and her horse, she was almost ready. All she had to do was grab a weapon. Looking through the armory, she found tons of cool-looking instruments of blunt and sheer destruction. There was one, however, that piqued her interest the most. It was a short-handed scythe. The curved blade shone bright with cold-blooded malice. At least it did in her eyes. I'm sure a wheat farmer didn't view a scythe that way, but Margaret's dreams of adventure had changed her view of things a bit. Last but not least, she grabbed a chainmail shirt. The metal was, as very, was a very dark, dark, deep black that seemed to draw in all the light around it. Easily slipping it on over her small frame, Margaret tied her hair back into a high ponytail. With the scythe at her side and the addition of the chainmail armor, her appearance took on a very dark and frightening image. Still covered in soot, she could have passed for death itself. Striding ferociously from the armory and back to the stables to meet S.A., she smiled at the thought of herself. <sighs> Horse saddled and bags packed, Sir Aegeon sat atop his steed, waiting for Margaret to emerge. When he saw her walking towards him, his horse actually spooked and stood on its back legs, neighing loudly. <coughs> As hit the visor of Sir Aegon's helmet slammed shut, whoosh, yells of whoa, whoa, horse came forth, settling the dragon, set, settling the horse, and reopening his visor. Aegon stared in amazement at the sight of what had only days before been such a sweet and helpful girl. Now, she looked like the spirit of war and perhaps farming. Well, Mark, you look terrifying. Nice work. I don't feel nearly as freaky looking next to you now. Ha <laughs> Thanks, S.A. That was going... That's what I was going for. We may not even need to fight this dragon. We might just scare it off. As wonderful as that would be, I do not see him... See it being the case. If you are ready, we will head out. I need to make one more stop. I need to see the witch. She would be out by the creek at this time, looking for toads or something weird like that. Oh, great. I have always wanted to meet the witch. What do you need from her? Uh, oh, it's, it's nothing. Um, just some stuff that helps me keep my head on straight, literally speaking. This death thing is tough. My body is decaying, so I have to use an extremely sticky epoxy to keep my body parts all in one place. Ha! That's kind of gross, I have to be honest. But you seem to be holding up pretty well so far. I mean, everything still looks good from here, Margaret said, winking at Sir Aegeon. Um, <laughs> oh, well, thank you. Uh, anyway, let's get going, shall we? Yes, let's do it. Margaret said excitedly. Margaret excitedly said as she hoisted herself up onto the horse. The two weirdos set off. Hey, who are you calling a weirdo? At least we got real bodies. You are, and we aren't some creep always hanging around spying on other people's lives. Barked Margaret. Ha ha ha! Oh, sorry, my apologies. I meant to say the two courageous heroes set out on their journey first to see the witch then off to slay the dragon. That's much better. See, it's not so hard to be nice, now is it? Margaret said with approval. The journey would be treacherous. One as, one as the terrain that they would be traveling had not been used often. The king kept promising to have the roads finished out this way every time he ran for king again. But did he ever keep that promise? 
I don't think so. Always saying he needed more tax money to get the job done. What a crock of horse poo. Hey, voice guy, can you not make this like a political thing, please? We got enough crap to deal with down here. Without the po politics, Sir Ajon requested. Oh, all right. That's the end of chapter four. Tomorrow we'll start chapter five. Um, that was fun. A lot of fun. And my throat hurts. And I shall drink more water because of it. If you enjoyed this, I hope you did. I know it was longer than usual, but hopefully it was entertaining. I know 40 minutes is a long time, but maybe you're listening to this like an audible book. You know, that's my hope anyway. Um, anyway, like, comment, subscribe <laughs> if you like me. If you don't, okay, here's the thing. If you don't like me, I'll know if I see views, but no likes, okay? And then I'll be hurt. But I'm going to keep doing it. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep. I'm going to keep pushing on. I'm going to keep working. You can't put me down. You can't make me stop. I'm going to go get it. I'm going to go get it. I'm good. But like, seriously. I keep on getting in fights with myself in the comments. And it's getting ridiculous. So, somebody else needs to comment. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye.